Welcome to another edition of Blades TV, the sixth edition. We decided to give Joelle the week off. What an emotional time it's been for the Blades, the fans, and also the families. First off, we have to talk about the fact the streak is over, the losing streak that is, and maybe the winning streak too. Oh yeah, they had a little bit of that as well. But first off, we have to talk about Tim Bozon, the Kootenai Ice forward who, after playing a game here last season, came down with meningitis. We decided to catch up with Tim before the Kootenai played the Blades for this season for the first time, and also while he took a trip to RUH for an emotional return to the people who saved his life. Yeah, for sure, it's, uh, it's a little bit weird for me to, to come back. Uh, uh, last time I, I came uh, in this ring, I was in a wheeling chair, so it's, uh, it's uh, some bad memories, but it's a you know, point. It's, it's good to be back and see the people the, that helped me while I was in the hospital, people like uh, Steve, Colin, and Saskatoon Blaze organizations. So it's also good to see them again, but I mean, um, when I left uh, the WHL last year, it's not something that I was expecting to come back and play as a 20 years old in this league, but uh, something happened to me, so it's the reality, but um, it's a little bit weird feeling, but I'm also happy to see the, these people again. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit surprising. Uh, I mean, uh, if you talk to the doctors and uh, a lot of people uh, say that it's a miracle that I'm here, but I work out during the summer in France uh, twice a day. I never give up, you know, that's my dream to play hockey. Uh, obviously, I wanted to move pro, uh, play pro hockey, but, you know, you got to be realistic here. Something uh, happened to me. and. Uh, I work hard and never give up and always believe and I'm here today again and get to play some hockey so it's it's good. Yeah, it was uh, it was unbelievable. I get to play uh, one uh, NHL preseason against Colorado and three AHL uh, preseason so I was there for a while and I really liked it that's why I wanted to stick there but uh, you know while I was at the hospital I lost 40 pounds and obviously uh, doing some to catch up and uh, for sure to play pro I'm not uh, I'm not ready yet physically, you know, my strength is not totally back, but it's going to take time and, uh, you know, it's it's a year that, uh, it's, a, it's a process that I have to, to go through, you know, you know, you don't want to play your 20 years old in the league, but like I said, something happened to me and it takes time and it doesn't just only in five, six months that uh, you rebuild your, your body and it's, it's good, you know, I take always positive things. Uh, I get to play hockey, so that's the most important thing for me. Yeah, most of it back. Uh, uh, I would say everything back, but my strength is not uh, as it was before. You know, I'm still a little bit weaker than I was, but it takes time, and that's why I'm here back in junior to, to rebuild uh, my strength and um, get my confidence back. It's a shame Tim won't actually be lacing up when the Blades play Kootenai this Wednesday, but he'll still have a place of honor, and at that, an emotional one as he drops the ceremonial first puck. And while I'm at it, more honors to be handed out that day as RUA child care workers are being given guest passes to attend the game and they will be honored not just for the work they did nursing Tim back to health, but for all the work they do for patients year round. That wasn't the only emotional night though. This past Saturday, the Blades decided to pink the rank and Corey Miet was on hand as the team's honorary captain while his mom dropped the ceremonial face off as well. And while we're at it, let's take a look at those highlights. Major side than Victor, but uh, you get the idea. Thompson a shot blocked. Back hand shot. Scores! Hi! Oh, let's go, Ryan Grant. Hogland couldn't get to it first. Here's Andrew Keppen. But for Orban, he shoots and scores. Brandon Baddock causing a disturbance. Carries it. Now tries a shot. Save made by Moody. The rebound. Pollock looking for the wraparound. On the near side, it's loose in the slot. The net came off the pegs, but he did so. Now short-handed, Cole Benson, deep shot, scores! Benson! Top of the right wing circle beside the net. Forsberg in front for McKechnie, got knocked down. Forsberg finds it, shoots and scores! Hey, Alex Forsberg! And here's Pollock on the right wing, steps in over the line, into the middle, kept a shot, he scores! Play. Hey, here we go. Armour, number 34, moving in. Deeks to the backhand, and Day came. The Edmonton line, Carroll pushes it forward. Now the odd man rush the other way. Sautner, Pollock, left wing, shot, glove. Sautner, Sautner to the left wing circle, Pollock. Across for Day. Mayo, shot, he scores! Managed to slip one through the pillows on Alex Moody Coming and in. Across on Brandon Ralph. Jesse Mills now, cold up. up top, shot, scores! Oh. Blake Orbins, one-timer. Benson knocked down Thompson, turned over. Here's Paddock moving in. Oh, what a glove stop by Allen. Couldn't pick it up, but it's now taken by Pollock in front for Kepi scores. Brett Pollock in the left wing circle finds Andrew Kep, who found a soft spot into the corner. Forsberg up top. Henry, Stoven, 
it's Stoven to the front of the goal. Loose puck shot scores! Hua! Alex Forsberg off a deflected shot came right to him. Top is sick. Sautner stepped into by Graham who takes it away, trying to step up front, give it to Hebig that's knocked out. Now shot, they score! Oh sure, Austin Adamson picks the corner. Yeah, I mean, you always got to be on your toes uh, against a Memorial Cup team and uh, they came out and credit to them, they played really well tonight and uh, we showed we showed that we could compete at some times but we didn't play the whole 60 minutes this, this game so I mean we'll go back uh, and practice this week and hopefully we can come out with a 60 minute effort on Wednesday. I didn't really, it wasn't really uh, so much what Edmonton did, uh, we kind of just did it to ourselves. We were turning pucks over, weren't back checking, uh, we, we went back to the old blades. Yeah, it's just a focus thing, um, you know, uh, winning is an attitude, Edmonton has it. They, you look at their lineup, they're not, they're not, uh, um, they don't have a ton of, ton of skilled players up there, they have, they have quite a few, but I mean winning is an attitude and uh, it's something we need to get. Well, against a good team like Edmonton, you can't get away with making the mental mistakes that we made and just soft plays. And I thought we uh, did some play the shorthanded goal where it kind of took a little bit of wind out of us. But uh, again, you have to learn to play against good teams. And I, you know, I look at tonight as a, as a good lesson for these guys. And they showed they could hang with them in, in times. We actually won the third period, but you got to play 60 full minutes and you can't make the little mental mistakes. Yeah, just wrong, picking the wrong guys up, coming to the zone. You know, we got Fords picking up the D's guy and just not nobody picking up that late guy and he's the dangerous one and uh, they're very good at finding that guy. So uh, again, just some young mistakes uh, for the most part. And uh, again, we just got to clean that up. We had a good uh, three game winning streak. Now we just got to go back to work Monday. We got three games and four nights coming up again next week. So. Just try to get things cleaned up and go from there. Yeah, you know, it was uh, it's pretty special, you know. Got a great group group of guys in there and, you know, coaching staff obviously giving the okay for that and just it was unbelievable. Yeah, well, I don't know, are you talking about the 50-50? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, I don't know, Sis just came into the dressing room and just said, you're not going to believe it. I was like, what do you what do you mean? Was, your mom won the 50-50. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> And are you ready for the crazy part? It was Corey Miet's mother, Kim, who won the 50-50 for the night. Just under 4,000 bucks. What are the odds, am I right? Stay tuned. On the other side of the break, myself and the boys head down to Moksha Yoga. Welcome back. Playing for the Saskatoon Blades can be pretty demanding on the body, and not just that, the psyche. With that born in mind, these guys do take pretty good care of themselves and decided to try something new, Moksha Yoga. I'm here with Leah. She's the co-owner of Moksha Yoga, also one of the teachers here, and you just yeah. led the class with the Blades. Sure did. How did they do? Yeah. They did fantastic. Yeah. Uh, they were really focused, and you can tell that they were trying hard in their postures. Uh, I think they got their sweat on and got a lot of benefit out of it. Absolutely. And now they're hockey athletes, so what are some of the challenges uh, hockey players have with yoga, maybe ones who haven't been introduced yet? I think a lot of it has to do with um, improving on the mobility, especially around the hips, spinal mobility, and also through the shoulders. And those are all all areas of the body that are targeted directly in our moksha practice. We do uh, lots of strength based things but also a lot of stretching for the hips and getting into the rotation of the shoulders and everything so I do feel like the guys are going to get some uh, good benefits out of their practice here at moksha. It's important to breathe so that you're still oxygenating your muscles, they're working hard for you. Next inhale come back through center, stand up reach all the way up and just exhale your hands down by your sides. I'm gonna take a nice big breath in. Just relax. Well, the best thing about yoga for anybody in any sports profession, whether you're doing it recreationally or whether it's something that you're looking for your profession, is that it creates um, a really nice routine for them where their breath work is really awesome. They get into a state of mind that is clear and focused. Um, there's lots of studies that have been out there to show that by having that awareness, that body awareness with the mind awareness, that when they're on the ice or on the field or wherever they are, they're more able to handle kind of stress and they don't react so quickly if somebody comes in and they take a hit, there's less injury. Um, the flexibility that's happening in these classes is 
you can't beat it. These guys are skating, their hips are tight. Um, they need this heat, they need this, these stretches. Well, you know, it's starting to kick my butt. I'm starting to sweat everything I had in me out. What did you expect when you came into this? Well, you know, I've done it before, but I did the, um, uh, I did the stretching one, and this one's this one's a bit of a workout, so you know, it's, it's good for us. I think, I think we need it. Just stretching and, you know, movement, you know. So uh, just making sure our bodies are, are stretched and, uh, and ready to go for game time. Perfect. Do you think you're going to make it to the end of the class? End of class? Oh, I don't know. I might pass out or I might drown in my own sweat. Point those toes, kick up, take one more breath in. And breathe out, come down, look to the left side, relax. Chill out. Uh, it sort of it gives you the correct sequence of which muscles to activate right first in, in any basic movement. So it really gives you body awareness and uh, coordination. I think that's beneficial for any type of athletics. Yeah, I, uh, I guess my last couple of years playing pro, I started getting into it just because you know, I had a lot of in injuries and uh, it really loosened up my muscles and was able to get me back in the weight room and you know, skating quicker and just the recovery and uh, you know, strength and cardio. I just think it's a good uh, all-around workout for athletes. you got to give me the update. The update is all over my body. You're quite wet. Yeah. What do you think about your physical health? It's pretty good. I think I'm keeping up. And what temperature do you think your internal body temperature is at right now? I don't know what it would normally be, but we'll give it a plus 55%. These yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going well, though. Well, that was a workout and a half, but the Blades boys did great. Now, Kevin, how do you feel you did? You know, I asked Leah. Turns out I did okay. I can do hot yoga. I'm not a yogi, but I'm figuring it out. You're not quite the limber lumber anymore. You're closer to yogi now. Yeah, maybe. A couple of sticks have found a joint somewhere or something like that. Absolutely. There's an analogy in there, but quite frankly, I'm exhausted. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. That's Moksha Yoga here. Give it a try. It works. That was more of my chest hair than I ever wanted you to see. Either way, the Blades were feeling pretty peaceful after their win in Swift Current, but to get to that point, they had to go through overtime and then eight rounds of a shootout. Let's get a look at the highlights. Passed it off, return feed, slap shot blocked. Point to Miette, who scores? A slap shot by Corey Miette. To Lisan, out to Mackay off the bench. Loose puck, Sajak stopped by Bo on the doorstep. They score, and it's waved off. Back to Gordon, learn out one timer again, scored! Another! Jordan Thompson left half ball, centering it, loose puck, they score! Stoneman closing in, shooting, rebound, they score! Another! Side of the net, Cave drags it out front, Moody makes a pad save! Saved in this one by Alex Moody as Scott and takes a pass down the left wing, he's got Lissan and DeBrusque to the net, DeBrusque, Lissan, score! This portion of Blades TV is brought to you by CIBC, the official bank of the Blades. Well, once the roster got finalized, get a couple practices in with familiar faces, the Blades have really started to pick things up a little bit. With more on what they need to do next, here's Ryan Dietrich with a very special guest. Thanks, Kev. Indeed, we are joined by a special guest. This is Dean Brockman, the assistant coach of the Saskatoon Blades. And, and Dean, take us back to the week that was. You went into Swift Current, tough building, then the three games and four nights sequence ends against one of the toughest, te toughest teams in the CHL, the defending Memorial Cup champions. 
most importantly, you got a couple W's out of that. So tell me about the week that was. Yeah, I mean, uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, we like to win the weeks, and uh, we started off on a good note with uh, winning a, you know, a really tough game in Swift Current, which was our first road win of the year. So that was great, and then. Uh, you know, to play back-to-back uh, -back on the weekends. You know, Red Deer, we know them, a uh, hard-working team, uh, very physical. Um, you know, I thought we rose to the challenge and got that win, which was huge. And then, uh, you know, we really got a good lesson uh, playing Edmonton. I mean, they're, they're a team that doesn't do a lot of things wrong. You know that they're a good team when they've won a lot and they, they just play like winners. And it was a good lesson for us. Uh, even though you want to get the win and show, you know, to see where you are, we didn't. But, uh, you know, I thought we learned a lot from that game and as we go forward this week. Edmonton proved, you know, that team is very different than the one that won the Memorial Cup last year. But at the end of the day, they are the champions and that's the title they're going to have all season long. But, you know, they showed it in the second period there. They're an explosive offensive team. But there was no quitting you guys. You guys pushed back in the third period and, and uh, got a couple on the board and made the score look, look a little bit more respectable. So do you take that into the next one as a building block as well? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we don't want to be a team that's going to quit, first and foremost. And I think, you know, for them, yeah, it's a different team, but they still have winners on their team that are telling their young guys or the guys that are new to their program, you know, how to win and how to get things done. And, you know, I know Steve Hamilton's a very good coach and had them prepared. And with us, it was uh, the never quit. You know, you want to play till the bitter end. And, you know, what happens, you know, to the bitter end is, you know, Austin Adam Adamson gets his, uh, you know, his first goal of the season. And and, uh, you know, there wasn't much time left, but you could see the smile on his face in practice uh, and the relief, uh, you know, just to get that goal and, and that point or whatever it may be. So, you know, a lot of positive things, uh, especially when you lose. Another big week ahead. Uh, this homestand's critical time for you guys. Obviously a chance to, to really make, make something happen here on home ice, which I know you guys have stressed as being important all year. It begins tonight against the Kootenai Ice and uh, finishes up against the Portland Winterhawks. So again, good teams, but an opportunity to make something happen. Three games in four nights. What's your outlook like? Well, I think, you know, really first and foremost, we take the first game first. You know, I don't think we can look too far ahead. I mean, Kootenai is okay. You know, I mean, we can't, you know, think they're not because they're a pretty decent team. And, uh, you know, we just have to play hard, play our way. I think that's important. I think you know, follow the structure that's in place. And then, uh, you know, you get the other two teams, uh, you know, you certainly follow them up with Portland, who, who certainly was a very good team last year, and they're not off to the start that they need to be. And, uh, you know, really, we want to establish ourselves on home ice. I mean, uh, we've had a six-game homestand. It's our, our chance to, to get back into the hunt and get back into the thick of things. And I think uh, if we have a good week, and again, we want to win every week, and it starts with the first game, and, uh, you know, we can't forget about the last two. Well, you heard Dean right there. One game at a time, and it does start tonight with the Kootenai Ice. Dean will be a few feet back standing, controlling the guys and deploying them out there against what is a very good team. Uh, Dean, thank you again for your time, you bet. and we look forward to it. It's going to be a great weekend. Part of that success comes on the heels of naming Brett Stoven as the Blades' 55th captain in franchise history. Here are some comments from the cap. Honestly, it's an honor to wear that jersey. When they, when they told me today, I got kind of choked up in the room. I was a little quiet, but... Uh, you know, it's an honor and it's something that I take with pride and um, especially having a young team again, it's a, it's a big role for the team, it's a big role for the organization in the future and, you know, it's not all about this year, it is about this year and we want to get some wins under our belt but um, I understand that this team has a bright future and there's a lot of guys in the system that are, that are high profile players and, you know, if we get a winning attitude out of the young guys here this year, um, in the future it's going to pay off and hopefully get this team, uh, or get this organization a championship. Honestly, nothing's really changed. You know, I've looked back at the captains and the leaders I've had from, you know, the 2010 season when I was a 16-year-old. I got called up, and um, you know, we had Tegan's on then, and that's a guy that I've always looked up to and tried to follow in his footsteps. And I've had some great captains in the past, and it's it's something that I, I really look into, and I want to roll myself after them and kind of have my own leadership style. And um, you know, it's it's a big thing for the team. Um, I'm going to take everything I can and help these guys out. Well, again, we all, you know, I always like to do a vote. I like to hear what the team has to say and what their feelings are. And again, we waited this long to make sure we had our group and got even all the new guys in here and let them get established a little bit. And uh, again, you know, I thought it was between probably two guys that I thought would uh, be candidates, and it came down to one of them. And and so he's a great choice. You know, he's a 20-year-old in this league. He's played in the, as a blade his whole career. He's been through some good times and, and some tough times. So. Again, I can't think of a better guy to lead these guys out of this.
Welcome back to Blades TV. Well, we've had a few people ask us about the program, and with that born in mind, we're going to take a trip a little bit back in time and pulling out of the vault one of our old favorite segments, The Blades Get Dolled Up. Tommy Guns is a concept, uh, it's a barbershop concept, tailors uh, towards men, uh, shaves and haircuts are our specialty. Uh, as you can see here today, we've got uh, the blades with us, they're uh, getting all trimmed up here for the season. Came in looking rough, not that the blades look rough, but uh, you know, they're, uh, they're looking good as they come out, all nice and shiny and smooth. We sat down, we had coffee and we came up with this great idea. We both thought it would be an excellent opportunity to get together, not only for the Blades to do a bit of a team building event before the season, but uh, for our Tommy Gun staff to you know, show uh, our appreciation to the, the city and uh, you know, hopefully the, the fans of the Blades. And uh, you know, we want to we see the Blades do the best, so we want to shine them up and make them look new. Well, the mullet's been with me for a little bit of a, a journey, but I think it's time to take it down. Um, I'm going for the Harvey Spectre today. So it'll look a lot like Josh's over here. Um, I'm nervous about it, but uh, I'm confident in my hairdresser, so. Well, I think Yuri looks uh, like a classic Macklemore out there. I think it suits him, I think it looks good. And I was a little disappointed that uh, Zage uh, got rid of the mullet. Um, but uh, but I, think, I think he looks good as well. Um, Zager decided to pull the trigger, so hopefully we're line mates so we can be lookalikes. I had long hair for a long time, so you know, I uh, kind of wanted to switch it up, see how it goes. And it's just hair anyway, so it always grows back. It's good. I mean, to get uh, to get all the guys out here doing all the same thing, and uh, you know, I think it's really good for the city of Saskatoon as well as the guys getting to know each other more, and uh, just a fun event. We're gonna keep the goatee. <laughs> Can't leave that one. Been growing it since I was 12 years old, so. We've got Pac-Man in the background. We have bubble hockey over here. We have TVs and iPads. This is an interaction center where uh, you know families can spend time together too. Not only just uh, come in to get a haircut, so you know, provides a great atmosphere for uh, for families when they are here. And I was in uh, Red Deer for uh, for 10 years, and I had the chance to to go to Tommy Guns and get my haircut there for a period of about four years. And uh, when my wife and I decided to come back to Saskatoon, we thought this would be a great concept to bring back to the the community there and uh, you know develop it for. Uh, the, the people of the city of Saskatoon. Yeah, no, I think overall this is uh, not only good for the team building event, but uh, it sounds like there's going to be a few guys coming back after what they've seen here today. Um, I think some of the guys are going to sleep well tonight. Well, stay tuned for episode seven of Blades TV. Plot twist, Joelle is coming back. We'll see you next week.